Tip-tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTut and welcome back to Motion Graphics Icons. Uh, we are on episode 8 now, the final episode. Um, however, if you have just stumbled across this or you're watching them out of order, I do highly recommend that you go and check out the camera episode first. In that one I explain everything I'm doing in minute detail. In the rest of these I'm assuming that you've been following along um, and keeping up with the series and therefore I kind of just do it, you know, and explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it, but I don't go into incredible detail. So if you struggle to follow along with this episode, check out the camera one and you'll be right as rain and then come on back. Um, but without any further ado, let's just jump right in. Last time we did the aeroplane, we've done everything now apart from the sunglasses. So let's take a quick glance over what we've done already. We've got the camera like so, the photograph like so. We have the boat, which is still my favorite. We have the surfboard, which is rubbish. <laughs> we have the suitcase. Uh, we have the cocktail. And last time we did the aeroplane. Um, I'm out of love with the surfboard. It's rubbish. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, but hey, seven out of eight that I'm happy with. That ain't bad. Let's do it. Okay, I'm just going to cut off these layers before they get in our way. Um, give them a little bit of time. Give them uh, action two. Cut them off there and grab our simple icons to JPEG. You can get these JPEGs from my website so that you guys can follow along. And all I need to do now is go in with my rectangle tool with the JPEG selected and just draw a rough rectangle around these sunglasses. Uh, from there, you can select them and realign the anchor point to the middle. If you don't have Motion V2, which is really useful, um, you can realign the anchor point using the pan behind tool by just clicking and dragging it. I'm then going to open square bracket to position it at my playhead. I'm going to hit P to bring up the position function and I'm going to go 960 by 540, which is the center of a 1080p composition. Lovely. Let's go. Um, what we need to do, first of all, is to trace this image using shape layers and build each section individually. Now you could pull this in from Illustrator, like I've said many times before. However, um, it's best not to because what it does if you do it manually is it allows you to think about how that particular item is constructed and how best it would be animated because you physically have to think about how to build it. OK, for example, each of these lenses is going to be a separate shape. So is the bridge, so is the arms. You know, if you build it in Illustrator and brought it straight in, you might not um, have built each uh, section individually. You know, um, it won't be best optimized for animation, which is what we need it to be now. So all I'm going to be doing is going through and tracing this image. So I've got one lens here. We'll call this one lens left. I can duplicate that straight away and make it lens right, like so. I can duplicate both of those, put them below the other two, shift them along a little bit, shift them down a little bit, and get rid of their stroke by alt-clicking this thumbnail up here. Um, if I then shift them away just a little bit more, I can replace their fill with underneath like this. And bring them into position. There we go. We're nearly halfway done with this one already. Um, the nose bridge then I'm going to create using a circle which might seem counterintuitive but it will make sense later. I'm actually just going to duplicate this lens left, call it bridge, put them underneath everything like this okay and then bring it over like so. I'm then going to hide for now the two lenses underneath. With this selected uh, I'm then going to open this up and add a trim path to it. What this allows me to do is choose the start point, which is going to be in the middle there, you can see. So I can adjust that start point until it's behind that first bridge there and adjust the end point so that it is covering that second lens. And now this bridge is animated uh, ready to be animated essentially. So I could do it with a single line, but since it's a circle, it's a bit easier to do. Um, let's bring those two back in and let's draw the two um, arms. So we're going to need a shape here. Make sure I've got no layer selected. Going to need a path coming up like this, which looks good enough, apart from it is a fill, which we don't want. We want a stroke. Okie dokie. Open square bracket pushes that um, to the playhead. I'm going to then duplicate this. First of all, call it arm left. Duplicate that and call it arm right. And then I'm going to take this, right click, transform, flip horizontal, and align it up. 
there. Okay, looking good. Last step then is these three little dashes. I'm just going to do them quickly with uh, the pen tool. That's all that's really needed. So click and click, new layer, click, click, new layer, click, click, new layer. Grab all those three, open square bracket, we're good to go. All right, I'm going to delete the JPEG here. Um, but however, we've got these sharp corners and stuff that don't look very good. I'm also going to go in and just neaten all of this up a little bit so that it aligns properly. Let's select everything we've done. OK, and I'm going to align all the anchor points to the center just for ease of use. Uh, again, you can use the pan behind tool if you don't have motion V2. And I'm going to use a thing called butt capper, which is hilarious, but also very useful. If I click this and then alt click this, it turns every corner and end to a round shape or a butt shape or a join shape, whatever you want. If you don't have this plugin, it's free. You should get it. Just Google butt capper. Um, <laughs> you can actually do this by just twirling down any layer, going to your stroke and changing the line cap and line join. All this does is do that for you with a single click. OK, right. We're ready to animate. This one's nice and simple. The first thing we want to do is probably have our lenses pop into existence. Therefore, I'm going to grab lens left and lens right, and I'm going to scale them up. I'm going to hit S to bring up some scale keyframes. I'm going to keyframe both of those. And I'm going to move along 15 frames. Now, in the other episodes, I've been talking about a ratio um, of 15 frames and then 10 frames um, and double or half of that to basically only animate in that length of time so that each sort of um, animation has the same rhythm, the same amount of bounce to it. So to illustrate that point, we'd move 15 frames along for the first section of this animation. So control shift right would be 10 um, and then control right, 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 right would be five. Uh, we can put a keyframe there. And then control shift right would be another 10 frames. So that's 15 frame gap, then a 10 frame gap. While we've got three keyframes is we can have our starting keyframe where we're going to put the scale down to zero for both of these. OK, we have our next keyframe, which is going to be an overshoot. And we have our final keyframe, which is going to be what we want to end up with. So we're kind of working backwards with the overshoot. I'm just going to put it to about 110. So they both overshoot in size and then settle back down to where we want them to be. Let's select all of those keyframes and add some easing to them. I'm going to hit F9, which is easy ease, but you can go right click keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then I'm going to head over to my speed graph. Now you should see something that looks a little bit like a wiggly line. If you don't, if you see something that looks like a rising line, it's because you're on the value graph, not the speed graph. So just go down to the icon next to the eye and change it to speed. From there, these three dots represent the three keyframes that we just made. I'm going to grab the second one and just pull this little yellow handle out to the left. I'm then going to pull this other yellow handle, if I can see it by zooming in, all the way out to the right. And what that means is I'm going to have an animation that goes fast or slow and then sucks itself back in a little bit. OK, you'll see what I mean like this. So you get that little bit of overshoot. They sort of scale up before they scale back down again, which is nice and simple. From there, I'm going to uh, copy these keyframes and paste them onto the other lens shapes. OK, so now we've got all four doing the same thing. Now, you, I could have just picked them to them. However, then I wouldn't be able to offset. So what I'm actually going to do is offset all of these um, by holding control, pressing right, one, two, three, offset by about three frames, that should be fine. And then press open square bracket on each layer underneath it. So one, two, three, open square bracket, one, two, three, open square bracket. And what that does is it just offsets it a little bit. Which looks pretty good, happy with that. Um, we now need the bridge to animate over. So that nose bridge there, probably could do it from here as that starts to settle because of that lens that's covering it. So let's make sure that, that lens just about covers the start and then we'll start animating in that bridge. So we'll take the bridge of the nose and we'll go to our trim path that's already set up. OK, so contents trim path, grab our end amount here, move on, say 15 frames. Do another keyframe, go back to that first keyframe here and make it a zero. OK. In fact, I might make this a 30 frame one. So Alt, one, two, three, four, five. That's right button there, right arrow, um, which moves it along a single frame. Alt, Shift, right, moves it along 10 frames. So now there's a 30 frame gap between there. F9 brings up your easy ease. Again, go back to your speed graph and drag that sucker over. And we've got fast to slow. What that means is it grows out. But by the time it reaches the other side, everything's already settled and it just nicely meets up with that, which is all good. 
is what we want. Okay, what we need now then is these arm shapes here to sort of fold out of the sunglasses. Um, so we need to wait until our animation is finished, then go and grab both of our arms, left and right, okay? I'm gonna grab the left one and pick whip that over to lens left, and I'm gonna grab the right one and pick the whip that over to lens right. What that means is they sort of follow these around, which is all good, yeah? So once these are sort of finished settling in, what we want is these uh, arms to start twisting out. So we're gonna grab both of these, and we're gonna set the anchor points to be bottom left for this one, and bottom left for this one as well, because it's flipped over. Um, and what that means is it's gonna rotate on the point where they would actually be joined to the sunglasses. And then we're gonna press R to bring up our rotation keyframes. Keyframe both of those, move along 15 frames. So control shift right, and then control one, two, three, four, five, like so, and then do another 10, control shift right. Again, we're gonna do the overshooting thing that we just learned, okay? Go back to that first keyframe, uh, the second keyframe, sorry, and we're gonna overshoot that. So these are gonna sort of come in like this and go whoop, boop, and come back again. So we're gonna overshoot that by about negative 25, and we're gonna do the same thing to this one, but obviously, of course, it'll be positive 25 because we're going the other way. And then on this one, it's gonna be 90 degrees. And this one's going to be negative 90. Now, at the moment, these are on top. Looks a bit weird. So we'll grab both of those arms and we'll push them all the way underneath everything. Okay, you can still see this line here. So when this comes in like this, it's going to look a bit odd. So what you can do for this one is you can just simply cut off when it starts. So if you go to um, arm right, for example, go to when the keyframe starts, you can just uh, cut it off there. However, this left one, because you can see it, um, you're going to have to trim path it. So therefore, you might as well trim path both of them. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit weird, okay? So Alt, open square bracket on arm left. We'll cut off that layer as well, okay? And then on either one, it doesn't matter which, just twirl down, go to add, and hit trim path, okay? Go to twirl down trim path, grab your end keyframe, scale it back to zero, keyframe that, one, two, three, for 30 frames, and then just twist that back up to 100, okay? Grab both those keyframes, F9 for easy ease, go into your speed graph, drag the sucker over there. We've done this a million times. Okay, so now when that grows out, it's spinning out, it's spinning out, it's spinning out, and it's growing. Yeah, perfecto. Press U to collapse those layers if they're in your way, and then grab those trim path keyframes. Make sure your playhead is over the first one, and then paste it onto the other one. Nice and simple, simple, simple. We're now gonna grab the rest of these other keyframes that we've got here um, for the rotation. We're gonna easy ease those and we're gonna do the same thing we've always done, okay? Grab those two here, shift them over so it's nice and fast. Grab those two, shift them over the other way so it's nice and slow. And let's have a look. Perfect, look at that. Looks good to me. What I want as that bridge closes off, I want those three little things to start popping up. That should look pretty good. Again, these ones are nice and simple. What we can have, in fact do is grab the keyframes from our trim path end here and just paste them on all of these, okay? If we hit U on those then, that's gonna bring all of them up. We probably don't want them to last 30 frames or take 30 frames. So what we'll probably do is shift them over a little bit. So they take maybe 20, like so. And we can start, um, offsetting these, okay? Control, one, two, three, like so. Same shortcut as before, control, right arrow, one, two, three, offset like that, and voila, dun, 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 dun. Nice one, let's see what we've got. Looks good to me, I'm happy with that. The sunglasses are nice and simple. Let's select all of these layers, right click, oops, I misclicked there. All of these layers, right click, pre-compose, make sure you move all your attributes into the new composition and you call them sunglasses. Bammo, that's it, we're done. The last thing to do is just add this little twist that we've got on all the other ones from the null object, which just makes them swing into action. So the sunglasses don't really swing, they just sort of pop up. Might be what you want, but we want it to look cool. Um, all you need to do is select your layer, Control Shift Alt Y, that brings in a new null object. Alt, open square bracket, we'll cut it off. Open square bracket, uh, control open square bracket will remove that layer downwards underneath your sunglasses. Doesn't matter, just looks neater really. Bring up your rotation and scale with R shift S, keyframe both of those. Move along 30 frames, control shift right, right, right. Another couple of keyframes. 
If you go back to your first ones, you can do the usual, negative 45 degrees for that twist, scale it down to about 90, and then add all your usual easing. F9, speed value for here, okay? I'm doing this, I'm not slowing down, we've done this a billion times now, you know, it's super easy. If you followed the series along, you should be almost as fast as me, you just pew, 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 pew you know? <laughs> you guys, uh, I don't want to insult you guys by just going slowly all the time, essentially. Um, once that animation is completely finished, scrub all the way along, pick up your sunglasses to that null object, and you've got your little bit of rotation in there. I'm going to go on step further again, and I'm going to elastic out, apply that. And there we go. We've got it sloshing in. Let's have a look. All right, not too bad. This one, however, I'm going to try shifting this along a little bit so it doesn't actually start rotating for another couple of frames, just because it takes a little while for those sunglasses to come in. So you've either got this, okay, or you've got this, which you don't really see much movement because the sunglasses aren't there. Perfect, happy with that. Let's take a look at everything that we've made. Aha! I have this error again. I don't know where it comes from. The way to get rid of it, if you get it as well, it seems to be rampant with this project, is just hit OK, quickly go up to Edit and Preferences, and then go down to your Media and Cache, OK, and clear your disk cache. It's something to do with the renders that you've got stored from each pre-render and things like that. Um, again, we've got it back. I won't do it now because mine's massive. Um, so we'll just move it out of the way. But that is pretty much it for this series. Um, it looks pretty good. I'll quickly put up on the screen everything that we've done so far and you can watch it all back. So, I mean, thanks very much for watching everybody. Um, this has been a brilliant series. I've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, if you want to see more of this sort of thing, let me know. Um, if you don't, if you think it was boring, also let me know. I want to know what you guys are actually interested in. Um, hopefully you did enjoy it though. I enjoyed making it. Um, if you haven't checked out the other episodes yet, please do so. There's eight in total. There should be a playlist on the channel somewhere. Um, and hopefully you guys can have a bit of fun making some motion graphics. Again, you can get all the assets and stuff from my website. So thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate you guys sticking around. I know this was a long series. And hopefully I'll see you all next time and we'll learn something completely new. Until next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.